The U.S. has arguably the most arable land in the world, and with such great soil quality, it comes as no surprise that the country has one of the largest farming sectors too. With that said, I bet there's still a lot you don't know about this sector, and that's why I've taken it upon myself to list out nine mind-blowing facts about the U.S. farming industry. Watch this video to find out what they are, what you need to know. The farming sector in the U.S. is undergoing a significant shift. However, issues like extreme weather due to climate climate change and the loss of arable land due to modern development pose a threat to the food supply. Furthermore, the number of individuals employed in agriculture has been steadily falling for decades. However, trade disputes cast doubts on the financial viability of important commodities like soybeans, which is the top food export from the United States. But all the same, innovation in farming is also accelerating quickly, as smart technology is transforming how Americans engage with their food on a daily basis. That being said, here are nine facts about the U.S. farming industry that you probably didn't know about. Number one, agriculture's $1.053 trillion contribution to the U.S. economy is higher than the GDP of Indonesia. In 2017, agriculture contributed $1.053 trillion to the U.S. gross domestic product, ranking it 16th in the world in terms of economic size after Mexico and Indonesia. Even while agriculture alone gave the U.S. economy a $132.8 billion boost. The industry's influence goes far beyond the land. Numerous goods and sectors rely on agricultural inputs to provide value to the economy, from the new leather ottoman you bought to the IPA calling your name at the bar. But despite the fact that there are no more than 2 million farms in the United States, just 1.3% of the workforce in the country are farmers and ranchers. This is a significant decrease from 1935 when there were approximately 7 million farmers. In contrast, 70% of the American workforce in 1840 worked in the agricultural sector. Number two, many consumers don't trust the food making process. In 2017, the international market research firm Mintel discovered widespread mistrust among consumers over the production of food. This skepticism has paved the way for support of home gardening and farmers markets. The need for traceability or the capacity to follow each step of the food production process has also increased. Number three, soybeans account for 60% of the U.S.'s $23 billion worth of agricultural exports to China. Even though the soybean was originated by Chinese farmers 3,000 years ago, 60% of American soybean exports now are sent to China. Soy may be popular for making tofu, but the plant is widely utilized for other purposes, such as animal feed and cooking oils. Soybean aside, the U.S. has sold agriculture cultural goods to China worth a total of $23.8 billion. However, there may be some danger for the U.S. soybean industry. According to a report published on Thursday, China has stopped importing American soybeans due to the increasing trade spat between the two nations. Number four, extreme weather is the cause of 90% of the crop losses in the U.S. The U.S. Department of Agriculture estimates that 90% of crop losses in the U.S. are because of extreme weather. Earlier this year, record-breaking cold in January and intense snowfall in February led to flooding in the Midwest that may have cost the U.S. as much as $3 billion in losses as pastures and crops went underwater. Meanwhile, in the West, total losses from the wildfires in Northern and Southern California have topped $12 billion. And in the South, Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service economists reported last year's Hurricane Harvey caused more than $200 million in crop and livestock losses. Number Number five, over 50,000 jobs in agriculture are available per year in the U.S., yet there aren't enough qualified graduates to fill the spots. Jobs in agriculture don't necessarily take place on farmland, as new employees may find themselves in a lab, an office, or perhaps even an open concept co-working space. According to Career Addict, some of the most lucrative positions available in the field include agricultural economists who forecast trends and advise clients for an average of $105,000 per year, and agricultural lawyers who handle cases dealing with proper land use, environmental protection, and labor laws, with an average salary of $115,820 per year. Number six, in the near future, you'll be able to scan the sticker on an apple and trace its history. According to the agricultural science company Corteva, new technology powered by the Internet of Things has the ability to trace origins.
origins of a fruit to its source. The new smart labels on fruits are meant to remove fears consumers may have about where their food comes from. They also target consumers who predominantly shop at local farmers markets and want to make sure the food they pick up at the store is good enough to eat. Number 7. 800 million acres of farmland in the U.S. is meant for livestock alone. According to a survey by Bloomberg, only 77.3 million of the 391 million acres of agricultural land in the U.S. are used to grow food for human consumption, with the remaining 800 million acres being used to feed cows and other livestock. This landmass is nearly the same size as India and makes up 41% of the contiguous United States. Urban areas make up only 3.6% of the total area of the 48 contiguous states, according to the same survey. Number 8. Wyoming has the largest average farm size in the U.S. Agriculture, along with mining and tourism, is one of the top three industries in the cowboy state, with cash receipts of close to $2 billion yearly. The average size of farms and ranches in Wyoming is the largest in the country, with the total amount of farmland in the state measured at 30.2 million acres. Wyoming also boasts of more than 11,000 farms with an average farm size of 2,726 acres, making it one of the top agricultural states in the U.S. Number 9. The largest ranch in the U.S. is King Ranch. The King Ranch consists of four land parcels in southeast Texas with a combined area of about 825,000 acres. Richard King, a riverboat captain who was born in Orange County, New York in 1825, founded the King Ranch and it was the Mexican War between 1846 and 1848 that prompted King to move to Texas. After the war, he acquired his own steamer and formed a partnership with his former captain, Captain Mifflin Kennedy. King then bought a portion of the Rincon de Santa Gertrudis, a 75,000-acre property. But in 1868, the King-Kennedy partnership was dissolved. King eventually gathered more than 1,250,000 acres of property and created an empire that covered the Texas countries of Clayburg, Nueces, Kennedy, and Willacy. The King Ranch carried on trading in sorghum, wheat, horses, and cattle after King passed away in 1885. And in 1910, the ranch started creating the Santa Gertrudis breed of beef cow, which is a cross between Brahmin and a shorthorn. The 1940s saw the first contracts for oil and gas leases, which brought in extra money for the ranch, while millions of acres of land that the ranch controlled in nations like Australia, Argentina, Brazil, Venezuela, and Morocco by the middle of the 1970s had to be sold off in the 1980s due to declining market values. The ranch, which served as the inspiration for Edna Ferber's novel Giant, is now a national historic landmark. It continues to be a significant working agricultural production center, and its museum and visitor center draws tens of thousands of visitors each year. What does the future hold for the U.S. farming sector? Now that you know some interesting facts about the U.S. farming industry and considering the climate changes the country is faced with, the big question now is, what will the U.S. farming sector be like in the future? Some research has suggested that by 2040, there will be a significant reduction in the number of farmers from 3 million to around 1.5 million, and that even with a 50% reduction in the number of farmers, those who are still in the industry will have to farm the same amount of land. According to other research, over 40% of farmers in the U.S. do not like the profession. One of the reasons for this is the low profitability on farm produce, the great risks involved in growing crops and livestock, as well as a lack of social status. That being the case, there is a great possibility that the number of farmers in the U.S. will quit and look for more rewarding jobs in the future. To add to that, rural populations showed further signs of decline in the recent release of the 2020 U.S. Census. A state-line analysis by Pew Research showed rural areas areas lost 226,000 people between 2010 and 2020, which is a decline of about 0.5%, while cities and suburbs grew by about 8%. This is a clear indication that more farmers are heading to the big cities in search of more corporate jobs as opposed to farming. So guys, does the future of farming in the U.S. look bleak to you, or do you think the sector can bounce back stronger than ever? Let us have your thoughts in the comment section, and if you enjoyed this video, please like and share it so your pals can watch watch it too. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and tap the notification bell for more interesting content like this. Thanks for watching.